So, it's been about a year, a year, a full year, no alcohol. So I thought it was about time to give you an update about my uh, non-alcoholic state nowadays. It's been about a year since I made my last video about 100 days. So yeah, I did a challenge last year about 100 days without alcohol. So if you haven't seen that one, maybe it's a good idea to look at that video first and how that one turned out. So today is the update about that. We are about a year later and, well, I'm still not drinking. Kinda. Let me explain. Well, I don't consider myself someone who doesn't drink alcohol. Yet, I'm not drinking alcohol. What? <laughs> yeah. Well, I am. There are a few exceptions. So, for example, for my birthday, I drank two beers. For New Year's, I drank like two or three glasses of wine, something like that. In one year time, in 365 days, I drank as much alcohol as before in one week. Let's say two weeks, max. So that's a huge improvement, right? And I can sincerely consider myself as someone who doesn't drink alcohol, even though I don't consider myself someone who doesn't drink alcohol, because from time to time, exceptionally, I will always accept a good glass of wine or something like that. At the same time, I have to admit that this year being the corona year and realizing the fact that the few times that I've been drinking alcohol was when I was with some friends or family and that we had to share a moment. <laughs> Knowing that this was a corona year, that limited, <laughs> extremely limited my social contacts this year. So I really, I mean, don't give me a medal or something. I mean, it wasn't hard at all. There just were no like occasions to drink. So I just didn't drink, I guess, something like that. So just to answer a couple of questions that uh, I received over the last months, people asking me how I was doing, etc. So no, I'm not drinking, even though from time to time I am. Has it been hard? No, that's the surprising part. I thought it would be so hard to quit drinking because I was, well, I was used to drink every week. And so I thought it would be like this major thing, change in my life and that it would require a lot of willpower, you know? <gasps> It's one of the easiest things I've done and one of the most rewarding. I get so much out of it. Do I get a lot of out of it? Okay, there are a couple of things that you need to know about alcohol that I know now that I've been doing some extra research and some things I already knew and some things I didn't know. So three major things why I'm so grateful that I've been able to just quit alcohol. First, let's debunk a myth. Alcohol does not kill brain cells. It does not kill them. Well, that's... Not true, because if it was, I would have read about it or heard about that. No, I know popular belief goes that uh, after drinking a lot, our brain cells just die. It's not true. It's not happening. What does happen is that communication between neurons get damaged. So the neurons between them can't communicate as well anymore when you drink too much or too often, too regularly, etc. And that is really bad. It's pretty much as bad, as, even if not worse, than brain cells dying off. Why didn't you just... That's one thing you definitely don't want to happen. So only for that reason. It's a good reason already to stop drinking. Number two. Number two is about neurogenesis. I talked a lot about neurogenesis. You know, the creation of new brain cells. Drinking a lot of alcohol basically brings down the neurogenesis to almost a halt. It's amazing. I mean, we just stop creating new brain cells when we drink regularly alcohol. And that is not good. High neurogenesis correlates directly with things like feeling good, feeling energized, having a lot of optimism, positivism, you know, lust for life. Live a little. Live a little. And with a low neurogenesis, it's the contrary. We're talking depression, anxiety, all these things, and no energy. So even though when you drink alcohol, you feel good and you feel like having more fun, etc., the alcohol itself will do damage in your brain and, and will slow down your neurogenesis, which will have the opposite effect. So when you don't drink alcohol, when you're not under the influence of alcohol, you will feel much more down and low energy and everything. Whilst when you do drink, probably will want to compensate that by drinking even more. So it's not good. Just by getting rid of the alcohol, you get rid of that roller coaster as well of energy moods etc and just you're your full self 100% every day normal just like that 
And then the third reason, the third reason why you don't want alcohol. And actually each of those three reasons is reason enough by itself to quit alcohol. So the third one is about sleep. Now I'm actually working on a, on a course, developing a course about neuroscience of sleep and dreams. And my research has led me to understanding more how alcohol impacts our sleep. So when we drink, we believe that, yeah, we're drunk or a little bit tipsy and then we sleep better, right? Wrong. You do not sleep better with alcohol. Actually, you might fall asleep easier, but the quality of your sleep will go down and in general it has a negative impact on your sleep cycle sir sir so obviously a year later without alcohol i sleep better i sleep way better and i've always said to everybody who goes to my workshops if there's only one thing you remember about everything i say please let it be sleep sleep has to be your number one priority if you want to work on your brain if you want to improve your brain health focus on your sleep it's number one now alcohol disrupts your sleep and it gets pretty interesting because when you dig a little further you start understanding a lot of things let me put it this way would you give alcohol to a pregnant woman no right not done okay why because it would harm the fetus. Yes. Would you give alcohol to a baby? No. Why? Because it would harm the baby. Yeah. Would you give alcohol to a 10 year old? No. Why not? Because etc. etc. At what age does it start changing? Would you give alcohol to an adolescent? Ah. Some people might say, yeah, what age adolescence? You know, like 15, 16, hmm, just a little. Why not? Some people would say, no. You know, in the US, drinking starts at, well, officially at <laughs> 21. Obviously, not everybody follows that rule. But in my country, I'm in Belgium, uh, it's legal to drink at 16, I think. Hmm. Uh, yeah, 16, but I believe it's 18 for spirits, stronger drinks. Anyway, the point being, why aren't we letting pregnant women drink alcohol? Why aren't we letting babies and kids drink alcohol? The reason is the brain, the brain development. The brain is still in full development and drinking alcohol as it slows down neurogenesis, as it stops the creation of new brain cells, what happens? Well, those brains are still growing. So obviously stopping that development through alcohol is a bad thing. That's why you don't want pregnant women to drink alcohol. That's why you don't want babies or, or small children to drink alcohol. Okay, so what's happening with adolescents? Why should adolescents be able to drink alcohol? The truth is... <laughs> they shouldn't. The brain is still in full development. And that means brain reaches maturity at around 24, 25 years of age. And of course, that is biological maturity. So that means that purely technically speaking, we shouldn't drink alcohol before 24, 25 years of age. And you can even go further than that because alcohol is bad for you. It is. There has been a study last year that showed that no amount of alcohol is good for you. There is absolutely at no point, you know, there, was, there used to be this urban myth that saying that like one glass of red wine would be good for you, something like that. It's not true. The study last year showed that there were no amounts of alcohol that were beneficial to brain development, etc., etc. It wasn't saying either that one glass of alcohol would be extremely bad for you, but there was just no point where it was good for you. It's just poison to our brain. Why, why would you do that to yourself, right? Okay, it's fun games the evening itself. So sporadically, that's, that's, that's basically the rhythm I've taken now. Sporadically, from time to time, why not? The few times I did drink alcohol, every single time, with one exception. And the next day I was like, ah, why did I? You know, it's just over the last year, I mean, every single morning, the next morning, I had this feeling of Ugh, not feeling well. <laughs> And that was after only one beer, you know? So uh, it's just crazy. So there was one exception. It was really good wine. I only drank one glass of it. It was delicious. And next day I was like, yeah, oh, it's good wine. Anyway. So one year later, was it hard? No. Would it be harder if I would go out more and see more people? I don't know, probably. Would I go back to the situation how it was before, how I used to drink before? Never. No, really, no, no, by no means. I feel liberated, you know? It's strange, but I reached a point where around Wednesday I was thinking like, ah, let's hope Friday arrives fast so I can have my drink. Actually, there were more than once I had that thought. So I started to really looking forward to that drink. And I don't like that. I don't like to be dependent of anything, let alone substances. That's just not what I want for me. So will I continue? Obviously, I, I just don't want to go back. I feel free. I've lost nothing in my life with the alcohol being gone. Nothing. 
And yeah, by the way, I still haven't found a good non-alcoholic wine. <laughs> I, I didn't really look for it. Beer, I've appreciated more non-alcoholic beers now. I got used to the taste. I'll just continue like that and hope it will continue to, to benefit my, my health and my mental state as well in general, my cognitive capacities. And we'll see once this whole COVID thing ends, once I get back in the real world with real people, if I start drinking more again. I'll be curious to see how that turns turns out if temptation or peer pressure will be too big but I would be surprised so yeah so maybe in a year or so I'll give you another update about how things are going but so far so good and uh, if you're thinking about doing this definitely you should give it a go and to put that into perspective just for you to understand it didn't work the first time it's like four years ago that I first started with like one month it was February short month first 28 days without drinking then I did three months then I did last year the full 100 days and continued straight so it took me four years to get there without actually wanting to get there. It was never my objective or my, my goal to stop drinking, never. I just enjoyed it too much. So I hope this helps. If you're thinking about quitting alcohol, definitely do it, do it. If it doesn't work the first time, it's not a problem. Don't despair. Try again later. Just give it a go when you feel strong and you feel at ease and don't put too much pressure on yourself. That's it. That's fucking it. That's fucking it. You stop drinking right now. Don't stay. Yeah, you're going to quit for the rest of your life. No, just one step at a time. Do it one week at a time, one month at a time, whatever. And if you start feeling like I did, that it's actually more fun not drinking than drinking, well, then you can just go all in. Take care, everyone, and see you next week. Brain out. Sharp.